If you're a car enthusiast, most likely you're not looking at purchasing an Audi A4, BMW 330i, or Mercedes-Benz C300. You want a car that's powered by, at the very least, an inline six or a V6, and if you can't find one, a V8. But that will likely be on the used market if you are looking at buying a European sports sedan, as these brands are downsizing when it comes to engine size. But if there's one car out there that is powered by a four-cylinder that will give you everything you're looking for, it is the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Now, we have featured this car before, around three and a half years ago, and there have been some minor changes throughout the years, mostly when it comes to packages and features. But for 2022, we're taking a look at the all-new Veloce trim, which is replacing the TI Sport in the lineup. So this will now be the trim beneath the Quadrifoglio. If you are looking at buying one of these vehicles, not much has changed. You're not going to be wondering, oh, am I missing out on anything? No, not at all. In fact, Alfa Romeo has made some more features standard for 2022. But the reason why I am here is because there's not a lot of fun cars on the market that's relatively affordable, but also cars that are daily drivable. But the Alfa Romeo Giulia is certainly one of them. And in the last three and a half years, I have featured a lot of the rivals in this segment, but I'm really missing out on the fun handling and the fun driving characteristics. And that's why I am back to once again feature the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Cars like the Alfa Romeo Giulia don't come around very often. And when they do, they're often very much unappreciated until they're no longer in production. And that's one of my greatest fears, that I believe this car is an enthusiast-focused vehicle and sedan that is not going to be appreciated until it's long gone. And that's why I am here to once again take a look at the sedan to see how it compares to other vehicles in its segment and also its closest rivals that also have a four-cylinder engine, but also to truly appreciate what this car is offering. Now, before I get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Boston Motorsports in Boston, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Alfa Romeo, Maserati, and used exotic inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. As enthusiasts, we can talk about the soul and passion of Alfa Romeo vehicles or get drawn in by the unique and special design that makes up the road presence for both the Giulia and Stelvio. However, for most Americans, this Italian brand is relatively new to the US market, where consumers still might be unsure what Alfa has to offer. In a segment where the BMW 330i, Audi A4, and Mercedes-Benz C300 are the go-to options for a luxury sedan, buyers in search of performance to supplement the ride quality will be forced to pay an additional 10 to 15 grand. That's where the Alfa Romeo Giulia comes into play, as it's not just a pretty face in a crowd of compact sports sedans. It's a car that drives exceptionally well for its price point. Getting into that pricing, the 2022 Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce comes in at $52,890, which is a marginal increase in cost compared to the 2021 model. In fact, there's a few noticeable differences when configuring the 2022 Giulia that will ease the buying process, and we'll get into all of that in a few minutes. Compared to its closest rivals, the Giulia is slightly smaller in length and width when cross-shopped with the BMW 330i or Audi A4, which is going to affect interior space, mostly for passengers in the second row. As the first-generation Giulia continues to be produced, this car retains its timeless road presence with its classy design. Instead of complex body lines or unnecessary cosmetic features, this Italian sports sedan looks good in almost any configuration, especially with Alfa making the sport front fascia standard for all models, and now having gloss black accents outline the grille which was once optional. No longer a $500 add-on, the Bi-Xenon adaptive headlights are going to give you better illumination at night on dimly lit back roads. Moving over to the side profile, the Veloce trim will be sitting on 19 inch, five hole aluminum wheels. And as we're gonna find out when we step inside, options have been limited compared to the TI Sport from last year, which offered bright, 
dark, or sport wheels. The 2022 model will have red painted brake calipers from the factory, removing yellow and black from the configurator. Then differentiating the float shake from other trims in the lineup will be the unique badging on the side, but also gloss black side mirrors which used to be part of the Nero Edizione package, and also no longer available is a $3,500 carbon package, possibly due to the low demand. As we make our way around to the back, the most eye-catching aesthetic is the aggressive rear diffuser and dual exhaust tips, but also even for a non-quadrifolio model, the Julia's rear fascia is quite memorable and dynamic, where the lack of a pronounced deck lid spoiler or even a sportier bumper doesn't have a negative effect on this car. As great as it looks coming at you, the C-pillar design, LED taillights, and overall shape of the sedan grab your attention as it passes by. And no matter what your thoughts are on the Giulia as a whole, you can't deny that the Italians once again stole the show in terms of appearance for cars in this segment. Under the hood, nothing changes for 2022, as the Giulia is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that puts out 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. On paper alone, these numbers outperform the sedans offered by the Germans, and when it comes to accelerations, the Giulia can go from 0 to 60 in around 5.1 seconds, making it one of the quicker cars on the market with a 4-cylinder engine. Of course, the ZF 8-speed is smooth when shifting, and in conjunction with the agile and athletic cornering ability, tedious commutes become enjoyable. Our model for today is equipped with all-wheel drive to take on winter road conditions, but most enthusiasts will likely opt for rear-wheel drive, which does come standard. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 24 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, our model today has the $600 red leather sports seats, which are power adjustable and heated for both the driver and passenger. For a non-performance model, bolstering and firmness are going to keep you in place, and in fact will hug you as you corner aggressively on winding back roads. Removed for 2022, the Veloce trim will not offer two-tone interiors like we saw on the TI Sport, and that's not the only difference compared to last year. Another change is the packages available for this trim, with the leather stitch dashboard now being thrown in with the 14-speaker Harman Kardon Premium Audio System, which used to be a standalone add-on. Up front, a Walls phone charging pad has been made standard, along with heated rear seats that used to be part of the premium package for the TI Sport. In front of you will be a heated leather-wrapped steering wheel, and in true Italian fashion, the start-stop button is mounted here rather than the center console or dashboard, adding a race car-like feel. You have a digital information display in between the analog gauges, showcasing a good amount of information. Setting the Alfa Romeo Giulia apart from other sedans are the massive aluminum paddle shifters, once again emphasizing that this car isn't your typical luxury four-door. Then moving over to the infotainment system, there'll be an 8.8-inch touchscreen, with Apple CarPlay and Android All compatibility to go along with onboard navigation. Similar to BMW's iDrive 7 system, there will be dual functionality, where you can use the Roy dial and touchpad to scroll through and access different menus, which you may find is more user-friendly, but also quicker to respond than using the touchscreen. For safety equipment, the Veloce trim offers the Active Assist Plus package, giving you traffic sign recognition, traffic jam assist, lane keep assist, driver attention alert, and active blind spot detection. Of course, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with front and rear parking sensors. Below, you'll find the buttons and dials for the dual zone climb control, front and rear defrosters, and AC. For the center console, the Julia is pretty driver centric, as a drive mode selector, volume and tuning, and Roy dial are all placed here to help keep your eyes on the road ahead. But more importantly, it enhances the effect of having the interior wrap around you, so that when you are on a spirited cruise, you feel as though you're in a fighter jet-like cockpit. For the center storage compartment, there'll be enough room for smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic moonroof to let in a lot of natural light to the interior. 
Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off on the passenger side. And this seat is adjusted for the back. It's also on a recline. And I still have a few inches of legroom to work with here. And of course, I'm not the tallest person out there. I'm around 5'5". Five five. So I do think that if you're on the height of 5'9 and above, you might be a bit cramped in this current seating situation. And Italian interiors are not known to be the most spacious. So certainly keep that in mind. We see that across the board was Alfa Romeo or Maserati. However, there is one thing to note here with these second row seats is that they're actually in a more reclined position. So you can sit back here, relax, and enjoy the driving experience, especially if your driver is really uh, driving aggressively on some winding back roads. You're going to be nice and secure here, especially with some bolstering. So Alfa Romeo did not forget about the second row passengers. Now moving over to the center seat, you actually have some good placements for your feet. However, you have a very aggressive center hump, which is going to impede a bit when it comes to leg room, and I think even shoulder room as well. There's a very Grand Tour style about this car, even though it would be considered a sports sedan. Just the way the seats are placed, and then even with the seating position for the center seat, I just think that you're gonna wanna have two people back here overall. And then on the driver's side, I adjusted this seat to someone of my height around 5'5". It's also on a recline, and I have plenty of legroom to work with back here. What I also like, too, is that we have a moonroof or a sunroof, and that brings in some natural light, and also it really makes the interior seem a bit bigger than it is in reality. So I like the way the interior is set up. I like the fact that you have a lot of natural light coming in when it's up front or in the back, and it really bounces off this red leather really nicely. Also back here, you will have two rear air vents to go along with two USB inputs and also three level heated outboard seats. And rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive right around 13.4 cubic feet of rear cargo space, which actually isn't that bad at all that will outclass the Genesis G70 and be right on line and on par with the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, and Mercedes-Benz C-Class. I was able to fit all my camera gear back here and still have enough room for maybe some grocery shopping as well. Now, when it comes to maybe going on a road trip, I think maybe you could fit three bags of luggage if you are going on a road trip with the family or significant other. Now you can lower the second row seats for additional storage, so you have longer items or maybe even some boxes that you want to load up, you can do so. But most likely, if you're looking for a vehicle that's practical from Alfa Romeo, you're going to want to go with the Stelvio. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's go out on that test drive. I take great pleasure in watching car enthusiasts discover the Alfa Romeo Giulia. It's a car that when you look at it on paper, you're like, all right, it has 280 horsepower, 306 pound-feet of torque, and a ZF8 speed automatic transmission. Sounds really great, but is it the same thing as what you're going to expect from Audi, BMW, or Mercedes-Benz? Where Alfa Romeo stands out in this segment is by being really driver-focused, but enthusiast-focused, more importantly, for people who love driving. It's not the most luxurious. It's not going to provide the features that you're going to see in, say, an Audi A4 or an S4, but it's going to give you an exhilarating driving experience that, in my opinion, with a car with a four-cylinder engine is unmatched and unrivaled. Because even when you look at outside of Germany, you have vehicles like the Volvo S60, you have the Genesis G70, Kia Stinger GT, you can throw that in there, but they're not really driver-focused, they're not really gonna be the most athletic or agile, and yet that's exactly what the Alfa Romeo Giulia is. Now, since we do have the Veloce trim for today, we do have the nice aluminum paddle shifters, which gotta be honest you have to engage them at least once or twice on your drive and your commutes to work it just really adds to the uh, aggressiveness to this car and really when you look at a vehicle in this price range you are probably looking at cars with an inline six or a v6 but i think alfa Romeo really stands out by being that option where it might be a bit more economical and it's still fun but when drivers look at the Alfa Romeo Giulia from the outside, they're like, oh, I could never justify spending, you know, fifty or $55,000 for a Alfa Romeo. I'd rather have a BMW or Mercedes-Benz. Then they get behind the wheel of one of these cars, and then you see that expression on their face, and like, wait a minute, there's another car out there that's not 
from the three big German manufacturers that actually is gonna give me everything that I'm looking for, a car that handles amazing, that can go around corners, that is just all around fun. And I can do so by looking unique and also being bold as well by choosing an Alfa Romeo. And all of a sudden you start seeing that in their expression and their enthusiasm being behind the wheel of this car. And I gotta be honest, it's been about three and a half years since I've driven the Alfa Romeo Giulia and I have missed the driving dynamics like this car provides. When you compare it to the Genesis G70, because I think really the Genesis G70 is one of those cars that can do it all. It is luxurious, it is fun, but the Giulia is something special. And I, I hate using that word special or passion or soul because we always talk about that as enthusiasts, but this car really is one of a kind. The seating position, the bolstering of the seats, even the more simplistic interior layout since you don't have a full digital gauge cluster or the biggest infotainment system, it's a car that really is just going to lock you in as a driver where you're just going to be focused on the road ahead. And really, even though it is a sports sedan, I do think when you look at the second row seating situation, it is somewhat of a grand tour. It's a softer car, despite the fact that it has a very rigid suspension, but you're not getting beat up or abused as you are driving on New England roads that are really bad. But on the nice roads like the one I'm on right now, it is absolutely serene and enjoyable. It just hugs the corners. The steering is nice and smooth. And really, quite honestly, this car deserves to be in sport mode or dynamic mode at all times. Now, braking input, I really like the brake feel of this car. You don't really need a mash on the brake pedal to slow it down. It is really a car that is gonna respond in many ways, whether it is cornering, whether it is acceleration, or even when it comes to braking. This car is not necessarily track focused, but in my opinion, it's certainly more sports car focused than its competitors that also have a four cylinder engine. When I look at competitors in this segment, like the BMW 330i, Audi A4, Mercedes-Benz C300, I never really understand why so many people pass up on the Julia because it's one of those cars that is going to be the most fun you're ever gonna have for a vehicle that's not considered performance driven. I mean, it, it is because it has uh, the most powerful four cylinder in this class, but it's not the quadrifolio. It's not the car that you're going to be tracking or, you know, really pushing to its limits. But at the same time though, it can be a comfortable commuter, but it can also be fun as well. And I like having that balance. I can actually sacrifice the softer materials. I can sacrifice some of the technology for a car that is more responsive because what I've noticed trying to avoid the potholes and the bumps and imperfections in the road uh, in the Boston area is that one minor correction and the car is moving to the right or moving to the left. It's very darty. It's the pure definition of dartiness. And there's no other car like it out there in this market. And that's why I have missed being behind the wheel of this car for three and a half years. There's just nothing that I can uh, really compare it to in terms of its driving dynamics outside of the Audi S4, BMW M340i, and Mercedes-Benz C43. But for cars with a four-cylinder engine, there's just nothing out there that I would say is as exhilarating or as fun to drive as a Julia. Gear shifts are very crisp and smooth. And of course, it's because you have that ZF8 speed automatic transmission, which in my opinion is the best transmission out there on the market today. And really, I think it can, com it can compete very well with the BMW 330i. Another thing too is that, especially right now with the car shortages and also with the really price of cars going up, the Julia is that car that's still available. You can go to your Alfa Romeo dealership, go to Boston Motorsports, and you're not gonna have an issue trying to find one. You can purchase it and then drive home probably the same day. And at least when it comes to that situation, uh, Alfa Romeo has got you covered there. It's a car that you can now just walk right into and buy immediately. But I just think that overall what this car provides, what it symbolizes not only to the consumer market but also car enthusiasts as well, is that it's a unique car. It stands out in its segments. It's a vehicle that 
is sports driven, sports focused, and it's a car that you will enjoy driving every single day in every single situation. Whether you're on the highway, on the back roads, going on a long cruise, it's just that car that at around fifty-five, fifty-six thousand dollars, it would be my choice for sure if I was looking for a four-cylinder powered sports sedan. But really though, this car really is a special sports sedan. And no matter what the stigmas are, what people have to say, it's one of those cars that you get behind the wheel of and you can't stop smiling. I've watched so many people, not only on YouTube, but also in uh, the car community, they get behind the wheel of the Julia and then all of a sudden it changes. It, it just dawns on them that there's something else out there that they never considered before. And it's something that really speaks to them. And they can appreciate it. And I think a lot of buyers who purchase this car appreciate that as well. There's just nothing else like it on the market, at least in my opinion, in 2021 and in this price range. So after waiting three and a half years to once again experience the Alfa Romeo Giulia, was it worth the wait? Do I feel the exact same way I did three and a half years ago? And if you are looking at buying a brand new luxury or sports sedan in 2021, is the Alfa Romeo Giulia Veloce worth taking a look at test driving and possibly buying. And what I'm going to say here is that Alfa Romeo, whether it is the Giulia or the Stelvio, their vehicles are really meant for people who can truly appreciate what it means to be a car enthusiast and really enjoy the driving experience overall. Because as I said during the test drive, there is not a vehicle out there on the market with a four cylinder engine in this segment that truly compares but also has a driving experience and demeanor that is quite like what the Julia is offering. It's not just the performance. It's not just the 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque. It's the handling characteristics because you have a nice suspension that is rigid but somewhat soft as well. You're not going to get uh, really thrown around on some bumpier roads. But the steering is so direct and so responsive. Uh, you don't really see that in this segment at all. Even from the German manufacturers, you're going to have more of a heavier steering and a weighted steering. but Alfa Romeo, it's, dare I say, a small hint, a small taste of what it's like to drive a Ferrari. Because Ferraris have lighter steering, but it's certainly very direct and, and so dialed in. And that's what the Giulia is like. And you just don't experience that for a vehicle at around fifty dollars to $55,000. It's just unheard of. But also, when it comes to the interior, it's not going to be the most plush. You're not going to have the softest touch materials, although we do have the leather stitch dashboard on this particular model. But if you can overlook all of that, if you're just focused on having a car that is going to captivate you the minute you get behind the wheel and drive off the lot, then the Julia is the car for you. And when I look at other vehicles in this segment, even outside of Germany, I just can't find a car that from a driver's perspective is worth taking a look at in this price range. I understand that if you are looking at buying a vehicle around $60,000, you have the Audi S4, BMW M340i, and Mercedes-Benz C43. But if you're specifically looking at a car that has a four-cylinder engine, there is no other vehicle out there on the market quite like the Julia, and that's why after three and a half years, I have not found a car quite like this one, and also I've not found a driving experience to match what Alfa Romeo is offering here with the sedan. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.